begin a systematic interpretation of spinal radiograph. Now, why is this topic important? A brief note on the importance of interpretation of spinal X-rays comes in predominantly while dealing with trauma. Now, the, for the, those who are working in the emergency departments, <clears throat> you might have heard the ABCD approach in trauma. So in A, when it comes to A, in trauma, it includes airway and cervical spine motion restriction. Now, once you restrict the cervical spine motion, you quickly go ahead, do whatever you have to do, and then you decide whether any cervical imaging is required or not, and then you take an X-ray of the cervical spine. Now, it is very important for you to and be able to analyze the cervical spine X-rays in the emergency department so as uh, to continue to decide whether you have to continue restricting the cervical spine motion or you can take off the restriction. Now, remember, restricting cervical motion is very uncomfortable and sometimes it may be even borderline painful to a patient. Now, if the patient needs restriction and if you fail to restrict and if the patient keeps on moving his C-spine, it may end up leading to significant nerve injuries, including paralysis, respiratory depression, and sometimes even death. So it is very important for you to be able to um, interpret spinal x-rays properly. Now, with that introduction, let me go ahead. So this is why I'm telling you, So this is one of our patients that I have seen in the past. And this guy came in with a trauma in whom I suspected that cervical spine motion should be restricted. And that is the triple block method in which I have restricted the cervical motion of this patient. Now, do I continue doing this throughout the patient's stay in the emergency department? At some point, I have to decide whether to continue this or not. All right. So how will I decide? So by properly interpreting the x-rays will help me to decide whether this patient needs this continuously or we can take this off. Now, before we go in further, let us see what are the objectives for the next 45 minutes to one hour that we are going to discuss uh, this session. Now, the first objective is to understand when a spinal imaging is required. When in trauma patients, not all trauma patients need a spinal imaging. All right. And not just those who are complaining with some neck pain or some paresthesias or some deficits need a, an X-ray. So when do we request spinal imaging? That's the first objective that we are going to address. And the second objective is once we got our X-ray, are we, we will be able to use a systematic approach while interpreting spinal radiographs. These are the only two objectives that we are going to deal with today. So doing a structured assessment and requesting a spinal X-ray. And two, once the X-ray is done, be able to interpret that X-ray. These are the two objectives that we are going to discuss today. Now, let's begin with cervical spine. Now, the first important thing that we will discuss today is the structural assessment. And there is something called Canadian C-spine rule. So that is the rule that we are going to use to systematically assess a patient with trauma to decide whether this patient needs spinal imaging or not especially cervical imaging or not. Now, the first question to answer is, does the patient have any high risk factors? High risk factors include age greater than 65, dangerous mechanism of injuries and any paresthesias. Now, what are these dangerous mechanisms of injuries? We'll come to know shortly. Now, if any of these features are present, you go to radiology 
<clears throat> C spine imaging is required. Now, if none of these high risk factors are present, the next, if none of these are present, the next question you are going to ask is, are there any low risk factors to allow safe assessment of range of movement? Now, remember, the answer to all these questions should be yes. So low risk factors, you have to, there are high risk factors for injury and there are certain low risk factors. <clears throat> so even if these low risk factors are present, you can still do a safe assessment. So what are they? Simple rear end collision. Yes, you are going on a uh, bike and there is a simple, somebody came and hit from behind, simple. It's not run over, it's not roll over, it's just a hit from behind. Ambulatory at any point. Now, after the accident, the patient was able to walk or not by himself or herself. Is the patient able to sit in the ED? Is the patient able to sit up, which means they are able to support their neck by themselves or not? Now, even if there is a neck pain, is it delayed onset of neck pain? No, immediately after the accident, there is no pain. But later on, slowly, there was some delayed onset of neck pain. No midline cervical tenderness. Now, if the answers to all these questions is yes, then you proceed with the next one. Now, if the answer to any one of this question is no, any one of this question, the answer to any one of this question is no, then you proceed with radiology. Now, if the answer to all these questions is yes, then you will do active rotation of the head 45 degrees to the left and right. You will ask the patient to turn his head 45 degrees to the left and 45 degrees to the right and ask for any increase in pain or paresthesias in the arms. If none of them is there or if the patient is developing any paresthesias, then you go for radiology or if the patient is unable to rotate his head or even if he is able to do it, but he is developing any paresthesias, then you go to the radiology. Otherwise, no radiology is required. So this is a three-step process. The first step is look for high-risk factors and then screen for low-risk factors. And then look if the patient is able to actively rotate his or her neck to the left and right. Now, what are the dangerous mechanisms that we are talking about? Any fall of more than one meter or more than five stairs height. Anybody who is falling from a height of more than a meter or five stairs. Axial loading onto the head. They have fell on the top of the head. Example, in diving accidents or if there is some weight that has fallen from top onto the patient's head. Actually, it usually happens in construction site accidents. Or a high motor vehicle speed collision. If ideally more than 100 kilometers rolling over of the vehicle, ejection of the passenger from the vehicle or a death of anybody else in the vehicle, a death of a co-passenger. All these things are high risk or dangerous mechanisms of injuries. Prolonged extrication times, if it takes a very long time for the patient to be pulled out from the vehicle, that is also a dangerous mechanism. Motorized recreational vehicles, all your uh, uh, go karting or your uh, uh, roller coaster rides, all these things are in your motorized recreational vehicles. Bicycle struck or collision, any bicycle or uh, being struck by a truck, etc., all these things are low, uh, high risk mechanisms. Now, if you know when to do an x ray, now you all you know is when to do <clears throat> an imaging. Now, will you do an X-ray or a CT scan, right? Now, there are two lists on your screen. This, the list on the left says unable or unsafe to rotate 45 degrees. The patient is unable or it's unsafe. Unsafe and if any of these high risk factors or one of these low risk factors is present, Neck pain or midline tenderness, age is more than 65, dangerous mechanism. Urgent definitive diagnosis is needed, which means that the patient is having some 
other injuries as well. He has an abdominal trauma. He is bleeding inside. He is in shock. And now you do not have the entire time to do a uh, detailed x-raying uh, or a C-spine imaging. So if you need an urgent diagnosis, now any of these factors are present, then you directly go for plain radiographs. Now, three plain radiographs, what are they? We are going to see soon. So if none of these things are present, now look at these as well. Now, GCS of less than 13 or if the patient is intubated, inadequate x-rays, persistent clinical suspicion of C-spine injury despite having a normal C-spine x-ray. And if sometimes the patient needs pan CT, which means head, neck, chest, abdomen, pelvis, a CT scan of multiple regions, then directly go ahead with a CT scan. Now, if none of these features are there, no imaging is required. So this is how you decide whether the patient needs an imaging. And if at all he needs an imaging, what type of imaging is needed is decided based on these lists. Okay. Now, when, let's say that your patient, you have decided that your patient needs a cervical spine X-ray. In that case, you will need three views. One is your lateral view, AP view, and your open mouth or the peg view.